Owls are among the most admired and instantly recognisable of all the birds, and they vary so greatly in both size and appearance throughout the world. It just so happens that many of the most popular and instantly recognisable species found throughout the world can be located in the British Isles. So in this video, we're going to be looking at the five distinctive owl species that can be seen across the British Isles. Before we dive into this video, however, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy this kind of content. Starting off with probably the most recognisable and most frequently talked about species of owl in Britain and possibly the world, the barn owl. With its distinctively pale plumage coloration overall, being largely white on its underside and a mixture of pale sandy browns and greys on top, the barn owl is a hard bird to miss visually. They are a species most commonly associated with open farmland or agricultural habitats and as their name suggests, barns and other old disused buildings are their most frequent roosting and nesting locations. However, they will also raise young in man-made owl nest boxes and tree holes if necessary. Contrary to popular belief, not all owl species in Britain or in the world communicate using hooting calls, and barn owls are especially well known for not being the case, as they are well known to produce a variety of high-pitched shrieking, screeching, growling and hissing sounds. These strange vocalisations, combined with the bird's somewhat slow and low-level flight in the evenings, combined with their very pale coloration, can make them appear very phantom or ghost-like, and in the past, these birds were often the subject of superstition and myth. In the wild, barn owls are usually seen patrolling in flight over open areas such as fields and meadows, usually in search of prey. In some circumstances, the bird's plumage can appear almost completely white from a distance, and their slow but buoyant flight certainly stands out. Barn owls have exceptionally long and rounded wings in relation to their body size, which combined with their relatively light build, makes them fly almost effortlessly over open ground. Barn owls are most frequently described as crepuscular, meaning that they are most active during dawn and dusk, though they are also frequently hunting at night as well, especially when feeding young, and will sometimes also appear during the day. Their large eyes grant them exceptional night vision, as is the case with virtually all other owl species, but they seem to rely more on their hearing to locate prey in thick cover, rather than their vision when flying. The mainstay of the barn owl's diet consists of small rodents along with a few other species of small mammals, mostly voles, particularly the short-tailed field vole, along with mice, shrews and the occasional young rat. They will occasionally predate small birds and reptiles given the chance though. As previously mentioned, they largely rely on their exceptional hearing, which is thought to be ten times better than that of humans, to locate small prey on the ground. The stiffened row of feathers surrounding the owl's facial disc forms an almost heart-shaped feature, which works almost like a satellite dish, channeling sound to the owl's sensitive ears, which can then be used to detect the exact position of prey, either in thick cover on the ground, or in darkness. Like most owl species, the barn owl's flight is notoriously quiet, almost completely silent, thanks to a number of physical features, namely the soft texture of its feathers, along with small comb-like structures present on the feathers at the leading edge of the wings, which reduce turbulence and allow the owl to fly in relative silence. This kind of flight reduces interference in relation to the owl's superb hearing, and also enables for a stealthy aerial approach, taking prey by surprise. The barn owl will then pounce upon its prey on the ground with its legs extended, crushing its victim with its talons, and then often transferring it to its beak to be carried away and swallowed whole. These beautiful birds are often an integral part of the farmland ecosystem, 
as they do significantly control the numbers of pest species including small rodents. With its beautiful coloration and stealthy hunting techniques, the barn owl is definitely one of the most charismatic and beloved among bird species found in farmland habitats. Another highly celebrated and well-known species of owl in the UK alongside the barn owl is the tawny owl. This is in fact the commonest and most widespread species of owl found in the UK and is a species most commonly associated with woodland habitats. Tawny owls are also the largest of the five most common owl species found in Britain, being considerably heavier and stockier in build than other species such as the barn owl. They also have considerably broader rounded wings in comparison to the barn owl, with a proportionally longer tail, which makes them somewhat more agile in enclosed spaces during flight. As previously mentioned, the tawny owl is a common species in the UK, and its preferred habitat consists of areas with mature trees, particularly mature and also small woodland, although they can also be found in certain gardens and orchards, sometimes even bordering with urban areas. The tawny is the most nocturnal of all the UK owl species, being most active after dark and roosting during the day, usually in a hole in a tree, or sometimes on an exposed tree branch near the base of a tree trunk. When roosting, these birds are very hard to spot as their beautiful coloration provides them with amazing camouflage, and as long as they stay still, they usually remain undetected, although they sometimes get pestered by corvids or small songbirds, which view them as a threat. Like most other owl species, the tawny owl relies on stealth and silent flight to approach its prey, while relying on its incredibly acute hearing to pinpoint a target and then pounce upon it from above. These owls typically locate their prey from high above in a tree, dropping from a high vantage point before pouncing upon their prey, crushing it with their powerful taloned feet. The mainstay of the tawny's diet consists of small mammals, particularly mice and voles, although they will also sometimes feed on small amphibians such as frogs and newts, as well as smaller birds and even earthworms. Another feature which needs to be mentioned about the tawny owl is how their young develop, or more specifically, what occurs to them after they leave the nest. Tawny owls are well known to sometimes lay their eggs and raise chicks a lot earlier than some other owl species, and these young seem to develop and leave the nest a lot sooner as well. The fledging age of most young tawny owl chicks is around 5 weeks of age, but they are often seen outside the nest a lot earlier than this, especially since the youngsters engage in a phase known as branching, where they jump and make short flights from branch to branch or tree to tree. At this stage, the young are still somewhat dependent on their parents for protection and food, even up to three months after they leave the nest, and they will typically hang around in the trees during the day, and then wait for their parents to bring them food at nightfall. Many may become concerned if they find a chick like this on the ground in a wooded area, but in reality these chicks are surprisingly able, and in many ways it's best to leave them to be looked after by their parents, at least most of the time. The tawny owl is probably best known in the UK, however, for its beautiful and iconic calls made at night. Here's a brief selection of calls recorded of this species.
A species most commonly associated with open grassland habitats, the short-eared owl is quite the opposite from the tawny owl in many respects. It is one of, if not the most diurnal of all the UK owl species, flying and hunting almost exclusively in the daytime, although on occasions it will also hunt after dark. The short-eared owl can be quite a common species in some of its local haunts, its preferred habitats including grasslands, moors, coastal sand dunes and marshes, although they will occasionally take residence in open farmland as well in some places. They seem to avoid wooded areas and prefer open spaces as their preferred flying grounds. In some locations, their ranges can overlap with those of other owl species, especially barn owls, although these birds look very different in terms of coloration. In build, they are very much like the barn owl in many ways, having long wings, a short tail, a lightweight build and a rounded face. However, their wings are proportionally slightly longer and narrower than those of the barn owl, with darker, more mottled plumage on top and a distinctive yellowish-brown patch on the leading primaries of the wing, as you can see from this individual. They also have pale yellow eyes, in contrast to the barn and tawny owl's dark, almost completely black eyes. In these areas of open terrain, Small rodents, particularly voles, are their preferred prey, and short-eared owls can cover large expanses of ground using their buoyant flight, similar in some ways to a barn owl once again, only they may cover even further distances. They scan the grassy areas below them for these small rodents, using both their sharp vision during the daytime as well as their acute hearing to pinpoint their prey. Given their unusually exposed habitat choices, Short-eared owls are also somewhat unique in that they nest on the ground. Usually in areas of tall grasses, females will typically make a nest where they'll lay four to seven eggs in a clutch. The young grow especially rapidly, and even at a young age they can swallow a fully grown vole whole head first, the equivalent of a human being swallowing a young sheep in a single gulp. A notoriously difficult species to survey in the British Isles, the long-eared owl is the rarest of the five owl species found in the UK. They are most similar in many ways to the previously mentioned short-eared owl, hence the name, but there are crucial differences between the two. First and foremost, they're long ears, except that these pronounced structures on the long-eared owl's head are not actually its real ears. These long feathers on the top of the owl's head, known as plumicorns, are not even used in hearing for prey, but rather to communicate mood and aid in camouflage. This is the best known feature used to distinguish the long-eared owl from the short-eared owl, whose plumicorns are usually not even visible, and even when they are, they appear so small they are almost non-existent. However, simply looking at the long-eared owl's plumicorns is not always a guaranteed way to separate the two. As you can see in this image, the plumicorns are not always exposed. Long-eared owls are typically marginally smaller than short-eared owls, with a somewhat more orangey coloration on their wing patches and the size of their face. Short-eared owls typically have light yellow eyes, as previously mentioned, whereas long-eared owl eyes are typically more orangey in colour sometimes with even a hint of red. While short-eared owls prefer open spaces as their preferred habitat as previously mentioned, long-eared owls live in mixed and coniferous woodland, typically preferring areas where shrubby thickets and other dense cover, along with hedgerows and conifer trees, are most abundant. Once again, the mainstay of the long-eared owl's diet consists of small rodents, particularly voles and mice, and unlike the short-eared owl, long-eared owls are also more nocturnal, although they also appear during dawn and dusk. Long-eared owls typically nest in trees, especially high up in conifer trees, where they make quite large nests out of branches and sticks, laying up to three to five eggs in a clutch. The chicks will be able to fledge after around 30 days, 
although they will still rely on their parents for up to two months afterwards. And finally, the smallest and arguably the cutest owl on this list is the little owl. Unlike the four species previously mentioned in this video, the little owl is not actually a native species to the British Isles and was introduced in the late 1800s from Europe, with the first successful releases being in Kent and Northamptonshire. These charming little birds certainly live up to their name, being barely 20 centimetres tall with a short tail and a somewhat compact, dumpy appearance. Now found in England, Wales and parts of southern Scotland, the little owl prefers areas of lowland farmland along with hedges and copses, along with parkland areas and orchards as their preferred habitat. A largely diurnal species, they are sometimes seen perched on fence posts or in low-lying trees. They have a somewhat unusual flight for an owl, with an undulating, almost woodpecker-like flight technique. Despite their small size, however, they still have somewhat strong feet and talons in relation to their body size, and can take quite a wide variety of small animals as prey. They can tackle small birds and mammals approaching their own body size, but they typically hunt prey a lot smaller, particularly small insects such as beetles, as well as earthworms. As previously mentioned, little owls are a lot more diurnal than some other species except for the short-eared owl, but they often hunt during dawn and dusk along with the barn owl, making them somewhat crepuscular, and they can also be active at night as well. Little owls typically nest in areas ranging from barns to tree holes and sometimes even disused rabbit burrows. Two to five eggs are typically laid in a clutch and the young are raised usually between May and July. They may not be originally native to the British Isles, but the UK countryside would certainly be a duller place without these adorable little characters. Before we finish this video, let's make a brief discussion about another aspect of owl identification, pellets. Pellets, or castings as they are known in falconry terms, are partially digested regurgitated remains of the prey the owls have consumed. More specifically, they consist of the body parts of a prey animal that the owl either can't digest or simply finds of no nutritional value, and so they are gathered up in their digestive system and regurgitated in a small mass, consisting of feathers, fur, hair and bones. Unlike diurnal birds of prey, owls typically can't digest bone that well, and so within a single pellet, a wide variety of skeletal material can be preserved from an owl's previous meal. By examining these owl pellets, one can determine not only what kind of animals the owl was eating, but also to determine what kind of species produced the pellet in the first place. For example, the pellets of barn and short-eared owls consist mostly of the bones of voles, especially the short-tailed field vole, whereas the pellets of little owls often contain the remains of insects, particularly the wing casings or elytra of beetles. With proper research and practice, it can be possible for almost anybody to examine an owl pellet and make such interesting distinctions between different species of prey and predator. Thank you all for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed the impressive bits of owl footage I included, as well as the interesting facts about the owls and their life history. Until next time, I'll see you all in the next one.